everybody, how you doing? It's Goddess Kone here, and I'm so excited to bring you another video. As promised, I said that I would start giving tips on how to build your ancestor altar and just some little quick and tips, quick little tips that I use to make sure that I venerate my ancestors at least once a day. Um, more than likely, it's more than once, but uh, beginning and the evening. So if you enjoy that, please stick around. If you don't know who I am, I'm Goddess Kone, and mostly I do a lot of card readings on here. Also, I'd like to share things that I've learned on my spiritual journey, um, venerating my ancestors and learning the gods and goddesses that is on my spirit team. So if you enjoy that, go ahead and stick around. Okay, so this show is particularly for black women because I do like to focus my um, content for black women because I am a black woman and I identify, uh, I'm, excuse me, not identify, I most relate to black women, so we're going to get started. And so here's to making an ancestral altar. This is how I do it. I mostly practice hoodoo, and so I do consider myself a hoodoo practitioner. So... Step one, if you've been thinking about starting an ancestor altar or just had like some, uh, just want to know where to start. So one thing that you can start first is to find your space. So this is going to be a space where it's going to be clearly accessible and um, a space where you can share your time with your ancestor without keeping them hidden i know there are people in the community that keep a room like they have a room for their altars um but if that's what you want to do if you want to keep it private that's perfectly fine but you just want to have a space not your bedroom and like not the bathroom because you are inviting your ancestors into your home so they're going to be guests in your home that you're inviting in so you don't want your guests to be all up in your bathroom or all up in your bed bedroom um you know watching you whatever it is that you do in your bedroom so you want to and also it needs to be a place where you're not going to forget like you're not going to just set it up and forget it you're going to be like at a space where you're going to be noticing it and also making sure that you work with it and i prefer to have my altar somewhere where there's like getting natural light but if your spirit team says no they like to be like in a room or in the closet or whatever just them that's perfectly fine it's just work with your spirit team but i personally i set mine by natural light um and so those is the first things um if you don't have if you do want to have it in your like a closet or a room just have like a sunlight that would be nice um, if you, um, later in the talk, later in this video, I'll talk about, um, plants, but you can also have some plant lights as well as in there. And the second one, uh, is to know your ancestor. So what I did is I started out with the ones that I knew. So the ones that I have interacted with that I grew up with knowing that has transitioned into the spirit world, I start off with them and so then after you think about who you want to put on your uh, answer straw start with the ones that you had a great relationship with in the physical form and um you want to start thinking about also thinking about what kind of prayer you what what do you want to do to start that ritual of sorry my dog was getting stuff what you want to do to start that ritual like do you want to do a morning prayer do you just want to ring a bell do you just want to light incense or candles do you want to uh quote some scriptures so how do you want to open it up so you'll let your ancestors know that you're gonna be talking to them so you want to plan that out and then you want to gather ideas of how you want to set up your altar okay and so some things that you want, um, I don't have pictures on my ancestor altar because I have like a small space and I'm in the process of getting a bigger table for them. And so a good way is to have some pictures. Pictures is always good because it gives you something to focus on and to uh, be able to see the faces that you're 
um, you're speaking with. I also keep a lot of pictures in my photo album. So if I just need that connection of looking at them, I just go to my photo album. But a lot of people do post um, pictures up by their, on their ancestor altar as well. Now, another thing that you can do is you can get some personal items. So I don't keep a lot of personal items on my ancestor altar um, because my ancestor altar sits in my living room. And so this is a personal item that was given to me by an ancestor that I interacted with. Um, once I get my bigger space, I will start to put um, personal items. But right now, I just I just don't. Uh, I don't put personal items, but this is a personal item. It can be like anything. It doesn't have to be jewelry. Um, I have like cards that they have written me. I keep that in a special um, bag with all my cards that they're, they've given me. I keep my pictures in my photo album, but that's totally up to you if you want to do that. You can also just write their names. You can write their names on a piece of paper and set it on your ancestor altar as well. You can get things like symbols that is connected with them. A uh, famous one is the cross. So you can get like cross necklaces. You can get a picture of the cross. If you're a Christian, then you can get a picture of like Jesus. You can keep your Bible on that ancestor altar as well. I don't keep my Bible there. I keep my Bibles upstairs in the ancestor that gave me a bible i keep that upstairs in my bedroom i don't put it on my altar because um right now it's just not a lot of space it take up a lot of space um think about what candles you want to use i recommend white um i use white to venerate my ancestors um but you can use incense you can use um wax warmers you can burn some herbs you can put herbs there you can put some flowers there fresh flowers i usually have fresh flowers standing behind me but i didn't pick none up but you can put some fresh flowers on there too and a lot of people will also talk about putting out altar cloths um i don't have altar cloths on my altar because i burn a lot of incense on there but here's an example of an altar cloth that you can use and you can lay it down and then the altar cloth that I use for my card readings is this right here or you can use whatever type of cloth that speaks to you um, traditionally it is white in hoodoo um, but I don't put an altar cloth there because I burn a lot of incense and I burn a lot of candles and, um, wax melts on my altar and that will just get a little too hectic to like clean up. But you can totally do that if that's your thing. Um, it's recommended. I see a lot of hoodoo practitioners put the white cloths down. Okay. So now you have picked your space, you have picked your item and you have, um, uh, you have the stand of where you want your altar to go. This is where you're gonna clean your altar first. The first thing you're gonna do, you're gonna periodically pick a ritual, a day, um, or a calendar, like a calendar day. I do moon phases, or you can pick a date on the calendar, like if it's the 15th, it's the 15th, um, to clean your altar. But setting up, you wanna clean it, you can use there's Florida water, there's Van Van oil, there's Hoyt's cologne. You can even use holy water. Um, it just depends on like your practice, but you want to use something to clean. I th There's different types of waters. Van Van and Hoyt's cologne are used for like other things. But if that's what you can get your hands on, that's what you get a hands on. But I would recommend just purified water or you can use Florida water. That's what I use. This is the this is one of the Florida waters that I use. This is homemade um, by a conjurer shop here, but I also make my own Florida water. I use vodka, and then I put my own herbs in it. But for some reason, my um, my spirit team like this lady's Florida water to clean the altar. Um, it smells really nice, and how I know that is like I've tried using other things and the vibe just wasn't there. So I get it. I didn't take it personal. You don't want to use mine. That's fine. I use my own Florida water to clean my floors and clean my doors. But you just want to think of something that's like cleansing. Um, do not use 
white sage unless you are Native American. Um, you can get away from that. There's blue sage. There is uh, sweet grass that you can use. Um, there's rosemary. Just something that's cleansing and protective at the same time. So you can burn those herbs. You can burn sweet grass. You can burn rosemary. You can burn um, blue sage as well. And now with the items that's going to go on there, you want to also cleanse those. So you can use the incense, you can burn the incense, you can burn the herbs. Um, you can even um, use smudge sticks, like I said, not white sage. You can take Florida water, you can wipe them down with that. You can wipe them down with holy water. You can even wipe them down with uh, just some purified water. You can take some incense, um, light the incense. And you take the smoke and you go counterclockwise. Yes, I go counterclockwise. Counterclockwise is to cleanse and move away. And counterclockwise is to bring it to you. So you can use that. Um, not all items. Like I have crystals on there. And some of those crystals can't go in water. But you can also put your items. You can take like a little bowl. You have your items. Here's your bowl. You can put some salt in it. And you can wrap your items like that. Um, some people cleanse their items with the moon. So like in the new moon and the full moon, you put your items out like that. You can take some moon water. You can also use that to clean your altar as well. Okay, so now you have cleansed your item. You've picked your space. You've cleaned it. You've cleansed your items. You've placed your items down there. So now this is where your prayer comes into or your opening statements come into play. This is where you signal to your, your ancestors that you are speaking directly to them. Um, I have a, what I do is I ring a bell and I just say something general. I'm like, um, it's for my ancestors particularly. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. What I do is I ring the bell clockwise around my ancestor altar. And I just simply say to my ancestors, known and unknown, um, I wish you well, and I'm here to speak to you. And so that's just something simple. That way, because one thing I learned in the spiritual community is like when you pray or you say something to the spiritual community, the spiritual Entities, they all hear you. So you need to directly, you need to speak directly to who you want to speak. So if you're talking to a certain deity, just like if they were in your home, you don't want, um, you're not, you don't want it on a loudspeaker. You just want that particular person. Like if they're in your home, you don't want the neighbors to hear what you're talking about. So you just signal to them exactly who you're speaking to. If you want to speak particularly to an ancestor, you make sure you say their name. Okay, um, you also want to light, you can also light their way. Um, that would be lighting the candle or lighting the incense. And you can also burn some herbs that sing, that you tell your spirit team, team, which is one of your boundaries or one of your um, rules that, you know, when you burn these herbs, you're speaking directly to them and then also speak it into the smoke as well. And so you're setting it up, you start your prayer, you said your prayer, now what do you do next? Well, simply you can just talk to them. Don't always go to them just to ask for something, just to like, just take, 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 because that's a lot of energy that they're going to have to exude to like answer your prayers. And also it can seem very one-sided. So just talk to them, even though they're walking with you, tell them about your day, tell them about the highs and the lows. Um, oh, another big thing is make sure you let them know when you're talking to them how you want them to communicate back to you. Do you want them to come into dreams? Do you want them to manifest in front of you? Do you want to have visions? Do you want um, certain smells? Do you um, want to hear them actually talking? Um, you just want to do with that. Um, do you want them to give you certain feelings and certain parts of your body to let them know that you're there? Um, some of my ancestors, they like to put bowls in the water. And that's another thing to put on your altar. Let me back up. Make sure you have food that they like and some water. Okay, that's your offerings. Make sure you have food and water. Um, 
sorry, my dog. And another way they can talk to you, like if you want to do some di divination, like you don't have to be a psychic to do divination. You can flip a coin for yes and no. You can get you some oracle cards. I, I'm not good at tarot. So I have these tarot cards that have like the meaning on them. So that helps me out. Do you want them to speak to you in cards? I also got oracle decks. How do they want, how do you want them to speak to you? Um, I also have learned and learning to throw bones. So I have my curios in here and my bones and things like that, which me and my ancestors are working on so that they can um, come through with the message that they need to give me to my answers in the bones on the bone throw. Um, do you want to have them manifest in random memories? Like you'll just be sitting here and be like, boom, you know, grandma, I remember. Yeah, they do that to mine. Do that to me, too. Um, you just want to make sure that you just build a good relationship. Just like if they were here in the physical, you wouldn't only want to go to them asking for things and demanding things from them. You actually want to build that relationship, that trusting relationship. Um, and um, also, since they are guests, make sure you keep your home clean and tidy as best as you can. I have cats and I have a dog and I have a seven-year-old, so it gets kind of hard, but you do the best you can to keep it tidy because they are guests coming into your home. And if they was to walk in your home, you wouldn't want it to see. Um, if they was to come to you and, and you answer the door, you wouldn't want them to come into a messy home. So I'm just saying that. And then last but not least on your journey, um, there will be ups and downs. Make sure you read books. Um, there's one book called Badass Ancestors that I just read. And so that's open up. It's written by a white lady, but she gives it in a way to where like anybody can do it because all cultures pretty much have some side of some sort of way of venerating their ancestors. So it's just not just hoodoo. It's a lot of cultures that do it. So make sure you read up on books, watch other videos, um, come up with the more you practice it, the more you get into it, the more you will come more advanced um, in your practice with ancestor veneration where you can incorporate um, ancestor money. You can start giving them coins and things like money like that. There's like certain rituals you can do, certain foods that you can start cooking for the ancestors. So that. And then lastly, I want to say is just to remain calm. Remain calm and just to keep the faith. Um, it can be scary depending on where you're coming from in your background, your religious background or anything like that. It can be very scary because you're stepping into like territory where you have the open back and forth communication. Okay. And a lot of people sunk down with that, but that's where your boundaries come in with your ancestors. Um, and then... If you are a black woman reading this, there's a lot of books on hoodoo that's out here. So please read it. I recommend to uh, read books written by African-American authors. Read those. Um, and then that will get you more in advance to like incorporate it in your daily life. And one of the things that I do in my routine, I just play my routine with my ancestors. Uh, this is when I wake up, I always like my incense and I like my candle warmer. I do that. Um, sometimes I ring the bell and say good morning. I will make sure the food that I set out hasn't like spoiled or anything because sometimes the flies get in through um, my, um, uh, my central air unit. So I check and make sure the food is good. Uh, and then I usually sometimes put on some spiritual so that they can listen to it as well. I tell them good morning. Sometimes I've set out um, some warm coffee for them because I had a lot of ancestors that was big on coffee. So I set the coffee out as well. And um, that's just one of the ways that I incorporate it daily. And then at night, I light ancestors in it. Um, I'm not ancestors. I like incense and I like the can the not candle warmer, the uh, 
wax warmer. So those are ways that I incorporated all the time. I also set jewelry on my ancestor altar so that they can bless it as well and um, put their energy on that. And then I wear some of the jewelry. Sometimes you will see me in the videos wearing those jewelry. So that's what I do just to incorporate it daily. And then randomly throughout the day, um, you know, call out to certain ancestors and, you know, just ask them to just be with me in case I'm going through a, a tough time or anything like that, especially with work. It can be crazy. So that is just my quick little tips. I'm not going to go into too much detail, especially if you're getting started. Um, it took me about four years to get to where I am with my ancestor veneration. I'm still learning some new things. So I hope that helps. Um, comment below how you, you know, if this helped you or not. If you don't have anything to say, that's okay. My favorite color is purple. So you can drop those purple hearts. And you guys all take care. Ashe.